So Melissa wanted to check in to see how things were going, and we could just continue talking. But but with Melissa's, uh, so why don't we come Hi, up? Marina. Hi. Why don't we come up to the blue where I was playing? We would meet on the blue over here. Here. In the blue mat. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Just so. You can't you can't actually play too. It's it's fun. Oh, really? You yeah. can play against the computer, or you can play, or you can play with somebody else in the room. That's oh. so cool. Um, Very cool. That word game there, you can play also. We could play that if you like. Oh. Anyway, so, so, so Melissa. Yes. What what is your? Do you, are you connected to Luke? You Stem? know, you're connected to everything. I know, but um, I should say, how are you connected to Luke? Stem? <laughs> So, so yeah. the last time I spoke with Nikki directly about loot was, you know, I'd love for you to have input on what's available on the playlist specifically yeah. for early childhood. Yeah. Right. Um, because of the concerns that she had last year with the, uh, the, the case studies mm -hmm. that, were, that were being used. So I sat in today um, and I got to see the residents and the host teachers for uh, Shirley's presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and I spoke with Alderson this morning about how they're Let me doing. just welcome Christina here. Yeah. Hi, Christina. Hey, There's no way to turn it off. You just have to get away from it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You actually could. Um, there's just people from the Loot STEM here. So that's what we're talking about. But welcome. Okay. Come on. I, I also you can get different oh, kinds of drinks. At the beach, actually. <laughs> oh, good. At the physical beach, yeah, it was good. awesome. <laughs> but uh, but just to kind of see how you guys were feeling. So who doing. who's Shirley again? Um, she is working with the residents on the framework on the Danielson framework. Right. Oh. And, and so yeah. Um. I'm going to try to how pull often, up. How, of, how often is she going to meet with them? Blah, sorry. Yeah, I'm Blah. pulling up the calendar. I think that they're meeting with her. They met last week and then this week. And next week it's going to be a break. And then they meet again the following week. So I'm looking at the Summer okay. Institute calendar. So these are, Christina, I don't, just to let you know, these are, um, Marina and I are doing a, writing project ver workshop with around multimodal learning, although we're, we're kind of shifting. Um, but um, with, I think it's 15 now, 15 or 17, yeah. Um, students at Lehman College who are almost done and they will spend a semester observing a host teacher and then student teaching in the teacher's classroom. And so this is a summer STEM pro program for them. We did it last year too. We did it with LRNG and so forth last year. Um, it's okay. You don't hear it too bad. <laughs> He's okay. So I remember you mentioned this before. So how does the multimodal and STEM, what are the connections you're making? <sighs> um, That's I. What connections? So, we have them. We have them. Um, one of the ideas is that, but let's not think about last year. A little, everything went kind of nicely, but we we have them think about the youth they'll be teaching by describing them and put putting those documents up. We did it on now comment last year. We're going to do it on youth voices this year. Um, they then um, do some, you know, do a, a, a mini inquiry into what is multimodal learning, what is, right, um, using documents and multimodal items. Um, yeah. And then um, and then they look at some possible um, projects that, that we've collected, um, again, across the grade levels. Melissa is an early childhood Professor, is that correct? Early childhood and childhood. And childhood yeah. at Lehman. 
and she's she's been hanging out with us and trying to learn about what we do and stuff. So um, now I will say uh, without any <laughs> whatever. Let me just describe that what what's been set up for them this year is an, an amazing experience but it's it's like f at least four different amazing experiences flying at them at one time and they're going a little bit crazy so and so um, mouse is doing a scratch badging project through credly and um alongside all this and marina and i are starting to think that maybe we could use just, just sort of go deeper with um, some of the reflective work around mouse. I mean, I'm sorry, around Scratch and the Scratch projects they're doing and have them post those things and post their reflections and their inquiry into the, into um, computational thinking, computer science and stuff that the, that that is intending to teach um, instead of throwing all this other stuff at them again. So we're, we all started too fast and we're all sort of cooling our, cooling our selves and uh, trying to figure out how to make this a meaningful experience for them. So that's where we are. Well, don't let me interrupt. No, I feel <laughs> interrupt all you want, but also jump in if you want or, or you don't have to say whatever, <laughs> whatever you want. That's what we're going to work on. So, so just to say, Melissa, one of the things, and, and Marina, one of the things Marina and I and Tom from Mouse have started to talk about is building a playlist really quickly around, um, oh, we, we, you can play chess, by the way, Christine, and you can pick up different kinds of drinks too. The, um, sorry, building a playlist around, um, around the scratch project are you melissa did you see any of the scratch work yet no i haven't looked at okay. that yet um do you know scratch at all i don't okay so i should go into the youth voices um to see it. well that's going to be hard because you you would need to get an account um through tom to oh, see. Well, oh you could but you could just do scratch yourself Well, Marina, what should we do? Should we just do some work and see what happens? Did Did Tom get back to you about a code? Yeah, he did actually, and I just um, yeah, because I I did write him, and I just kind of said because I've never actually gotten to speak to him at all. I just like oh, I just wanted to let you know that I'm I'm you know co-facilitating with Paul, and mm -hmm. thanks for inviting us to participate um in his workshop series for the micro credential and i told him a little bit about myself just that i'm all you know i'm currently third grade and i'm really i've been doing my own coding work mm -hmm. you know um and that i i knew i wanted to embed coding into either a writing unit next year or a math unit and um and that i really wanted to follow along but that i just had that i didn't have the lehman email so he was like just sign in with your regular and you'll be fine so but okay. he was happy. He was happy. So he good. was like, no, just sign in. You're good. 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 So, for example, just to be very concrete about this, the um, we have them, the, the second playlist, they, they do two playlists right away. Um, we were imagining that they would finish one during the workshop and then they would finish the second one in the week after that. These are, these are young, no, they're not all young, but these are these are people who have jobs during the day and children and they come home and then they have to do three hours of this work. And I just don't, anyway, it's a big deal. I think trying to figure out how they can manage. Um, so I want to sort of, I'm confident. Here's, here's what, here's what Marina and I have said to each other. And you can say it your own way, Marina, but I'm confident that by, creating a a profile and beginning to post work whatever it's about on youth voices in multimodal ways and using now comment to look at the work um, and then kind of building a portfolio 
that that sort of stream of work is enough to understand what we were after. And whatever the content is of that, it doesn't matter so much. So if the content is, you know, um, is, is the material that we've pulled together, that's less important than if um, Tom, like Tom has three videos that he wishes they could watch. Like we could pick up some of the content that he, that he isn't going to pick up. So we're trying to learn how to work together. And, and I think, I think it's probably a good example of what might happen in a school too. It's like, you know, lots, kids get thrown lots of, uh, anyway, and that's no excuse for us doing that to them too. But <laughs> anyway, Melissa, do you have any thoughts around all that? Cause you have another perspective here. Yeah. yeah, and um, getting to see who the residents are now, right? Like, we, 10 of them are from our department. So most of them are early childhood, but then a couple, three, I believe, are childhood. And I've had them in classes before, so I know who they are. Hmm. And um, I was just wondering how they responded to just the habits of mind. Uh -huh. um, because, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of give you a sense of what Shirley Shirley Hall is doing, like her first meeting with them was about trust. Mm -hmm. And then the second was school culture and a community of learners. And so a lot of discussion around um, how, to, how to build that community and um, what's a safe space for learning and taking risks and how adults are really modeling for the kids. So they watched videos today in today's session on um, on how teachers were having conversations about the content alongside the kids and mm -hmm. kind of problem solving. So that to me kind of feels very related to this idea of habits of mind and right. just building confidence in yourself as a teacher, getting comfortable in that identity. I mean, there are 22 Danielson, whatever those are. They call them principles or something. Right. And there are 16 habits of mind. And then, and then you know, computational um, thinking has a list also. And you could crosswalk all of these, right? Mm -hmm. You could kind of say, oh, there's persistence in all of them. There's, right. there's you know, I mean... Um, but the residents are experiencing these as siloed projects, right? And I want to figure out how we can help them not feel that way. Does that sound like a good thing to do? I think it does. I just... Yeah. yeah. Um, I know that, you know, it's going to culminate in their planning together with their host teachers. But the sense that I got today, too, um, resonates with what you just said as far as it's a lot. So, I, you know, a lot of sidebar conversation of I didn't think it was going to be so much in the summer for me to do. And, um, you know, I, I think that in any year would be typical. And then to add on the pandemic, just the, the whole fatigue of, of everyone um, continuing in this way is adding on to that. So um, I know that once they get into their classrooms and in that last, it's, that's actually when we already have the semester starting, it's the 16th to, of August to September 10th that they're starting to plan with their host teachers. So I think that right now, um, because they don't know who the students will be in the classroom. When, when do they plan with their host teachers? Say that again. Um, August 16th okay, to, yeah. to September 10th. All right. So it's a, it's a long chunk of time. Um, and so, you know, the activities that they were doing today was a mix of host teachers and residents together, mm -hmm. just sharing their observations on the various videos and, and uh, slides that Shirley was sharing. So getting to know each other. Really. So, so mm -hmm. again, again, very specifically, we want them to 
experience Youth Voices and go on there and post something on Youth Voices. Now, we could help them find an inquiry around all that, but there's no reason they couldn't use the Danielson inquiry that they're doing already and write about that on Youth Voices, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But how do we get them to see that possibility? Yeah, how to see that connection. Yeah, yeah she, she has a really great exercise, and some of them were saying that they didn't know how to find that link um, within the videos that she had shared. Let me see. I'm pretty sure I wrote it down here. Discoveries and questions. So she shared um, what they had posted as their discoveries after watching the videos and then their questions about those discoveries. Uh -huh. um, and that to me sounds exactly what could be shared then in Youth Voices so that they can start to see how, you know, what they're doing on the Wednesday meetings is relevant and informs what they're doing on the Monday meetings. That's when you guys are meeting, right? Mondays. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then you just said the computational thinking, that's the mouse piece. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> and there's, there's, there's the library too, by the way. Right. With <laughs> Allison. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. I mean, the schedule, I'm looking at the calendar because again, Alderson shared the whole file with me. And it was, that's why I emailed you like, okay, he said that you had additional office hours and just yeah, we don't know there. about that though. You know, <laughs> we we've never been we haven't been informed yet about that. Although it's okay. I've I've heard it mentioned. Yes. Okay, but the Monday but, meetings, I chances are I I don't see them going into the office hours with you, um, because they're meeting, and then the work and and what they're watching in preparation for the next meeting is a lot. And like you said, they've got their own lives, and some of them are are teaching or working. Um, yeah, in every, every, everybody with us the other day had had children, one or two, right? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Marina, what were you going to say? You were. Um, <clears throat> I was just going to share with um, Melissa if she wanted to join in the mouse class. I I just found the code. Oh, you should. Um, yes. Oh, please. Yeah, I can. I'll just put the link in the chat. Okay. Thank um, you. Yeah. So you have to join. So um, when you so you have to join mouse mm -hmm. create dot mouse dot dot org. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna put it right in. There. And and you have to join Scratch. And when you join Scratch, though, um, join it as a teacher. I'm gonna look that up. Okay. And one of the things that they've got in their folder too um, is. A list of links. So now I'm looking to see. Oh, that may all be there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mouse credential. It's a TED talk. No, there's no link. So, okay. So, for example, that TED talk. So, we want them to learn how to use Now Comment, right? Right. Um, but we could have them, and we've already put that TED talk into Now Comment, and they're they're annotating that, but they, but, but the way the scratch project is working, that was just sort of like, yeah, if you can do this, it'd be great. If you, now we're going to go do the work. Right. And I understand that, but we, we could, we could slow down and say, Hey, you know, that thing that you were, you know, Tom suggested you watch, that's going to be part of our project. Right. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I think we should do more and more. Yeah, um, I'm putting the educators link in the chat. You want to when you join when you join Scratch, you want to join through that URL. Okay. So and, you so you get an educators account. Okay, and for for Mouse Create, where am I putting that group code in? Um, as you as you register at the after you put all your information in, they'll ask you for a code. Okay, I got you. Why At the end of the process. Okay. Okay, so. So as a mouse member, 
I have, it says my site is a mouse member and I have my site's educator code. Is that the code that you just gave me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That okay. code, yeah, that's going to be for mouse. Okay. Perfect. And I, I, I don't know if Tom knows you're coming, but he may or may not approve you. <laughs> I don't know. Right. If he, I don't know if he I, has I to, mean, or it have. It may happen know. automatically. I, He'll say, just, "Who is this person?" Yeah. I just joined in immediately. I mean, I just put oh, so in. And, so it may work that way. Yeah, fine. Unless okay. he was. No, no, you're right. It may work that way. So, but, but Melissa, uh, mm -hmm. especially since you know these kids, they're, yeah. they're not kids. Sorry. How, what do you? <laughs> the, young, these young, students. Young women aspiring professionals. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, I feel I, again, I, I love everybody in this project, but, but I feel like they've made really clear, like, wow, we can't do all of this. This is a one we can't even think with all this flying at us. Mm -hmm. And we've, we really haven't listened enough to them. Yes. And at the same time, I'll tell you that yeah. overall, um, last year's reflections on loot stem was that it was the best experience in right. comparison to the student teaching one semester deal so um no doubt they, yeah 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 so it's the onboarding and you know and i understand nikki's wisdom now because mm -hmm. i try to get my interns to um to sign on and do this and when they realized that it was not required but you know um volunteer they totally were like you know what i need to take a break this summer so that's just the general temperature i think you know of society unless i absolutely have to do this and so nikki's insight was also it's not going to feel relevant until they're actually in the classroom so going back to your idea of you know cross cross referencing the the sources so the ted talk that you guys are having them annotate the ted talk that makes absolute sense because mm -hmm. it's familiarity and exposure to the same content but from different perspectives and starting to you know, puzzle it together themselves and see, you know, how is this relevant for me? And we were going to have them look at the, look at computational thinking, mm -hmm. look at, look at the habits of mind and come up with questions that are important to them as teachers that they want to explore. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like Shirley did that already. Shirley Hall, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, Shirley Hall. But she's doing it specifically from a classroom, you know, um, yeah. location. Whereas I think what what's happening with, with Youth Voices and with um, now the computational thinking is yeah. their preparation. So how do we get them to see how do we how do we see that this is all your behind the scenes work for then what takes place in the classroom which is where Shirley is situated with her work does that make sense to you guys I mean that's my take just kind of like from what I heard today yes and no yeah I guess sorry go ahead I interrupted you Maria okay. no I, I was gonna say I, I think that me I think that makes sense to me um so Except they're, that, spending, they're spending the time working with Shirley on the classroom looking at it through Daniel the Danielson rubric and all the components in the the yes, framework they they haven't done a deep you know today was not a deep dive into the components of the Danielson framework mm -hmm. but just how what's happening yeah you know, there were two videos um and two questions around uh kids making choices and having the ability to make choices those and videos are in the folder those are in the folder yeah so you guys are listed in the folder and by the way the educator code i'm getting a, a message that says um the code you entered doesn't seem to be right hmm. 
maybe AFPTH. I just did a copy paste. Let me check it. Let me check it one more time because I'm copying. Okay. A-F-P-T-H-Q-K-B. Yeah, that's it. Maybe it's because he doesn't have your that's yeah email in it. Yeah. Okay. So do you do you have is Tom but Jesus right or B? Do you have his email? Let me. I I would imagine it's in there too, right? So I'm. Do I, Marina? Can you, can you put his yeah, email in the chat? Please? I will. Yeah. Oh, okay. It. Melissa, um, I have an idea of what you could something that you could help us with. Yeah. Um, in 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 this this um attempt to be meaningful to them, okay. and and the thing about the background stuff, I don't totally understand that because we do imagine that they'll. There are stances and, and actual tools. Like maybe they could use, they could go to their host teacher and say, let's use now comment for that project. Or, hey, let's, let's have students build a scratch project in your class, right? And there is, by the way, a, a, um, a younger child version of scratch. There is, okay. Although, yeah, scratch junior. Uh, although it may not be necessary because, very young kids can do scratch senior and and well, it he, sorry what go ahead no, I was gonna say, and I, from my own experience too um he uh he said really like second and up but i'm just thinking for early child like i think that scratch junior is really targeted at k1 no oh, okay. okay because it's, it's really like um it's for the ipad I, i've had my students use it um when they had like really no experience and it, it literally is like touch you know touch drag and drop mm -hmm. which is what you do on scratch too but it's it's there's a lot there's a lot more pieces and it's more visual okay um, the, um yeah sorry and 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 i i could be wrong about this but the um teacher who we've worked with for many years um who works in middle school to high school who uses scratch um Chantanou, he has found that kids are sort of, they sort of time out by seventh or eighth grade on it. So just to say, it is it is a lower level, uh, it is an elementary experience usually. Okay. And and many kids by seventh grade have been there and done that with Scratch too. Um, okay. But um, I don't know. They, but, have, they like to move on to the other coding languages. Yeah. I, what, from what I've, yeah. you know, they want to move on to like Python and the other ones. So yeah, you're right, Paul. Well, by by that time, I think they're still excited to do projects with it sometimes, though too. Yeah, yeah. I that's so why I was hesitant to say. So yeah. much personalization and. But anyway, yeah. <clears throat> so here's here's what. Here, so you get a sense of we want we want them to have this experience with a social network that's educationally based. And then if they end up doing, like there are elementary school versions of that that they could imagine using and we mm -hmm. should, should. Um, what's the one that everyone uses, Marina? I forget. I'll, I'll think of it in a second. Code.org? No, I mean, I mean for, the, that's a social network. Um, for, for education? Yeah. I'll think of it in a second. Um, doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll forget. So what all I'm saying is there's that whole experience of, of being like being in the social network community and people seeing your work, you're seeing the work, they're being conversations. And then now comment is about conversations online, social annotation of media and and text, right? Um, which goes K twelve in, in my um in my view at least. It goes beyond that. But um the other experience that we were, that is sort of key is building a portfolio and thinking about a portfolio. And what I wanted to ask you, Melissa, was what are the portfolio requirements that they have to face in the fall? Because it seems kind of silly to build a portfolio in the summertime. If that work can't be then, they can't then go into their their, um, do they have a student teacher portfolio they have to create? They, they have Task Stream. Are you familiar with Task Stream? No. Yet another platform. <laughs> um, and that portfolio um, 
I'm understanding is really driven by accreditation for the college. Yeah. So in specific courses, they have to upload into Task Dream their their final project. So um, in the child development course, for example, that I've been teaching now, they have to do a child study. And at the end of their semester, they upload that and I grade it in Task Dream. And that's typically the first semester in graduate school. So then th there are key courses, I don't know all of them, that they have to upload these assignments into Task Dream. And then in the student teaching semester, when I grade them, I have to do all of the grading within Task Dream. And so Task Dream is where they're doing a reflection on, um, uh, we're doing coaching sessions where they're not graded, informal five minute observations of them um, teaching, you know, maybe morning meeting or a, a math talk. And then there's also the formal observations that has the Lehman rubric, which is a variation on the Danielson. Um, and then they have to do a self-evaluation, their mentor teachers evaluations, their host teachers, um, cooperating teacher, their evaluation also gets put into task stream. Okay. So I want to be very practical and ask, mm -hmm. is there any way that we could, the portfolio that we were imagining they're going to create mm -hmm. will have a unique URL. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way that could go into task? It's task stream. Yeah. Task stream. T-A-S-K. T-A-S-K. Does that represent anything or it just means, no, okay. Uh, yeah, that's just the name. Actually, it's, it's task stream, but it, let me pull this up so that I can see. Watermark is is so, your task stream a, a series of questions and yes first of all do they already have access to this oops sorry wait um did i put that in yeah so when you go into this website you'll see task stream as the first and then there's um a couple of other there's live text aqua via and ck20 Okay. I've never gone into any of those. Okay. Um, they have to purchase their task stream account um, when they begin graduate school because uh, for most of them, depending on what their program is uh, in the first semester, they have to upload something into that collection. So do so, I, I don't understand that. Are, have they started that yet or not? I don't think that. Well, yeah, these would have. Yeah, um, they would have in yeah they would have already started in task stream yeah okay so they have access I I'm just thinking that if we could make the portfolio they do in these three or four weeks four mm -hmm. weeks four four six weeks whatever right um, yeah if we could make that meaningful and be a part of task stream mm -hmm. that would that would make the work feel worth it to them. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so the question is, is there a way to take a URL from another project that you're working on and get that into task stream? Yeah. The other, the other question though is, um, what about the micro badge that they earn with, with, um, with mouse? Where does, where does that end up? That now I think these are these are questions that probably Nikki would be better mm -hmm. able to answer, but I can certainly share them with her. Or you know, I don't know if you're in communication with her I can, on I can, a regular basis. But I'm not, but I can be more. Uh -huh. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Um, I can touch base. I I need to talk with her. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we can both ask. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I don't mean. I I just. You know, I'm, again. <laughs> no, I, I hear your question, and I'm I'm yeah. looking. If I shared my screen with you right now, I'd show you what the student teaching requirements are, so that you could just get a an overview. I think that's. Um, and ha, the, do they know these requirements too? They do. Yeah. Because they'll get oriented at the beginning of their student teaching semester. See, 
for the residents, it becomes really interesting that they can put that URL that they're creating with the onboarding mm -hmm. and your work into Taskstream because then they see the relevance for like how they can revisit that once they go into their student teaching semester. Right. And, and the so, badge that they earn with mouse will have a, it'll have one URL. Uh -huh. And if they could put that in Taskstream, then in, once it's in there, you could click on that and then see all of their mouse work that they've done. Right. 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 Um, I'll, that would be I'm smart. Gonna, and can I, I, can I sh start a broadcast? Oh, yeah. You, yeah, you can share it. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So, so, so this is what it looks like. Yeah. Um, Good job, by the way, sharing <laughs> right away there. Okay. You can, you can see how, you know, it's their placement information, but again, this is specific to student teaching. Um, I don't know what I'm looking at. Tell me what it is. Oh, it's the okay, requirements, so, yeah. Right. So, so these are the students. This was my previous semester. Okay. For each of these students, they're going to go in and what you're viewing is what I would be grading uh -huh. for them. So they've put in their placement information of where they're doing their student teaching. Okay. The dispositions assessment. And then, wait, this is task stream? This is task stream. Okay, go ahead. So, but this is task stream specifically for the student teaching semester. Uh huh. So this is um, all of the different uh, documents that they need to upload mm -hmm. um, for completion and graduation. Dispositions, I think, again, really intersects with this idea of habits of mind. You know, like how are you developing as a professional? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's the midterm observation, their attendance sheets, how their cooperating teacher is evaluating them. Um, and then this is not really relevant because they don't have a new second placement. It's the same placement. Mm -hmm. That's a carryover from the old form of yeah. Lehman's student teaching. And then at the end, you can see here, there's a self-evaluation and an evaluation of experience. Mm -hmm. So let me see if I can how, take us how, back to. How flexible are those, are those columns? Those columns, that's that's the School of Education's placement office. So that's Leslie Lehman. I don't know if you've Yeah. Um, you know, that that's what she We met on the first call. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this is let me see if okay. I don't have any work here. Um I'm trying to Okay, well, these are student teachers. Okay, this is the program. So this I th think is where for the beginning, but it's not giving me a TPA. Let's see, the traditional program. Okay, so can you see the, in small letters on the left side yeah, okay. where they have the different courses? Uh -huh. It could be very possible that before these courses, there, you know, there's the onboarding or micro credentials or however you know it it becomes titled so Le um, leslie lehman would help us do that leslie lehman would be the one to put it together her team through, through nikki yeah yeah right mm -hmm. right Got you it. know and and so that url would be really relevant to you know to have there yeah um for all the work that they've done and then it also gives them that context of like why am i doing this yeah okay so, you know, and I can return to it later on. Yeah, it makes it meaningful now and later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to stop sharing now. So, and I think, I mean, I'm thinking that rather than, rather than saying there's, there's a lot and there's too much work, right? I think we need to think, how can we make this, how can you take control of this? Yeah, you know, each of the residents and make it meaningful, right? So that's yeah. yeah, that's why I'm asking these questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, surely, you know, what we want to 
um, be conscious of is how is it purposeful mm -hmm. for our students in the classroom. So I think that what we're discussing now is how are all of these wonderful resources and you know and, and various um, meetings that they're having, how are they purposeful in getting them ready? Um, and I mean, I think it's obvious, but how can we make it even more explicit for them? I, seems to it may be obvious to us the question is how do we yeah you're, you you just said it so i don't know why i'm repeating it yeah uh, yeah. yeah so talk talk to us also in the same vein uh, you do the child study right mm -hmm. and you know the um and we could put the url in we're we're thinking of doing another playlist before we get to this one now but you know one of the playlists we we do is around a description of a child right and it's right. and it's a kind of a made up child or one you know somebody you know cuz mm -hmm. cuz they're not in a class right now right but is that a helpful thing to do or do we do things that are kind of i mean I, you gave us a child study and the one you gave us i think one i think one or two yeah. It, yeah. is in the mix of mm -hmm. of you know what they'll be reading mm -hmm. yeah so I I think that it's familiar to them because they've had to do it in different courses. And the reason why that's a constant assignment is it's in preparation for what they have to do for the EdTPA. So um, in the, the EdTPA is the... EdTPA is, is what they'll take in their final semester of student teaching. And that's for New York State certification. Okay. That they... Um, have to write a narrative oh you know as as part of the lesson plan so it's not just the lesson plan but what's the context of where you're presenting this lesson plan and then they videotape themselves and i mean with the pandemic the edtpa hasn't gone completely through um so that's so, another portfolio they have to do <laughs> I just... yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are they are they um, already aware of all the different of I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't have to do the ed, ed TPA, but I had a student teacher about two years ago um, and she was doing one. And I remember it was it was a considerable amount of work that she had to do. Is that something that the students at this point are aware of all of the different requirements and pieces that are expected to be within that um, portfolio? Um. I don't think they, I've never heard the language around the instructors or the, the students as it being a portfolio. Oh, okay. And, but they are aware of the fact that, you know, I have to contextualize where am I teaching? What is the, you know, what, what, what is this community um, like? What's, who is my focus child? Um, you know, what's the, what's the language component for that? focused child? Um, how am I going to address uh, their strengths and then build on them and then just make that justification for why they've designed the lesson plan that they have? So, so that is like right now I'm teaching um, a summer course that most of the students are towards the end of their graduate studies and then they'll go into student teaching and in this class, I'm doing a, a variation on that EdTPA format mm -hmm. so that they are writing a two page, you know, narrative about where is this lesson plan taking place? What's your justification and what are your essential questions? Mm -hmm. um, and and a reflection afterwards, because there's a heavy emphasis on, you know, looking at the lesson plan after it's been delivered and there's a so, description of a child in that also um not in the assignment that i have but in the tpa there is yes because i think well maybe i had mentioned this again M melissa like i just said i don't really know as as much about it right at this point um but it i want i I just completed ISTE certification a few um, months ago, and one thing, and they they have you put together. Um, they do have they call it a portfolio, but it you have to give evidence of like twenty four different indicators in terms of how you're implementing different um, approaches and styles. Um, and one, one thing that they did early on 
almost immediately was they gave us basically like a table of all of the indicators mm -hmm. with space for um what are you know where where are you learning information that can support you to meet this indicator mm -hmm. and you know i'm i don't know i'm just wondering if that maybe that could be something helpful like that ha the, to learning the information about the habits of mind can support the development of the reflections for the you know for the um the part of the ed tpa where they have to go back and think through i guess the the decisions that they made during the lesson is that what it yeah yeah i i think that that would be helpful i'm looking right now for the ed tpa handbook because i know that i have that also um because i've you know in my coming to lehman and supervising student teachers i just kept hearing this my students talking about you know i've, I've got to get this finish this task there's a number of different tasks for ed tpa and so there's a specific seminar instructor that's working through the various tasks that they have to complete for ed tpa and a lot of it is what you're saying in terms of justifying you know not as specific as identify where this indicator is present that's more so the work that i think the rubric which is a form of the danielson that that mm -hmm. that's kind of like what we've been trying to do um with us prep and um and i think in in loot stem what's been really positive is the reaction to shirley because it's not so prescriptive that it's um you know this is the indicator but more so this emphasis of like you know let's talk about what's going on in the classroom which is present there also in the rubric yeah. but i i think it's just how you the delivery of it so shirley's mm -hmm. style because this is her second year um and the meetings that were happening last year were really positively received those happened after the summer mm -hmm. Last that year? happened after the summer, yeah. And they're happening during the summer this year. Not, yeah. This summer is, I think, new. Yeah. That they're getting Shirley, and and that might be, it's good, but I don't know how. It's all good, and you can right. you can see why it's happening, and yeah, it's just like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost like you don't want them to turn off on it because it is good, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do we, yeah. yeah. So I'm really happy to be part of the mix. Um, and I think we just need to be really clear with ourselves and with them about what we bring. And what, what I think we bring is an inquiry stance, meaning, and, and Marina was said this really clearly in a meeting earlier today, meaning if, if we can get them to focus in on a question, that, a, a, an issue, an inquiry that they want to pursue themselves, mm -hmm. that they can, they can hold on to that line through all of this other stuff that's happening around them. Yeah. I think that's important. And understanding all of this, there are two, the ed TPA, but also the, um, the other thing you were talking about, the task, the ta task those are two different things, right? <clears throat> yeah. And yeah. Task streams to me is just like the, you know, where you deposit everything. The ed TPA is the, the real work. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to get clear myself. Yeah. What, what, that was a perfect way to say it. So in, instead of thinking, this is just where I put my stuff, mm -hmm. to understand that these things are portfolios where you can represent yourself, this, that these can be meaningful containers for yourself. Right. Would be a nice thing to give them in some yeah. way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then, but then the habits feel like an important piece too. So I think, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I've come to really appreciate that dispositions, like, it, mm -hmm. especially for, for people that maybe are sort of like, I'm not sure if this is the position, if this is the job for me. You kind of, self-select and recognize if there's good conversation around dispositions that you know what 
I don't want to be in the classroom. And so I feel like those dispositions are really a, a, a nice guide and predictor. And, and, you know, on the flip side, they are also a very validating. Like, yeah, this is exactly, you know, I am someone who wants to consistently learn. And I want to learn alongside my students. Because that inquiry stance is for us as educators, but then it's also like, how do we share that with our students? Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel like Shirley's coming in. And that was a lot of what she was discussing today, you know, going as far as saying, it's really important for us to say in front of our kids, I don't know. That's a good question. I, you know, I've got to think about that myself. And so. So let me ask you that. I should have asked you this at the beginning, Melissa, but let me ask you now. I've been recording this. Would this, oh. <laughs> would, would this be okay to put, to give to the residents to, if they, you know, it's just yet one more thing, but if they want right. to kind of see how we think about stuff, it might be helpful. Yeah. 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 I mean, okay, good. You know, I, I, I hope that I've, I've been accurate. You know, this was my first, um, you know, sit in with them Yeah. to see how they were, were doing um with the onboarding and and the other piece you know all this in mentioning that yes there's you know like um playlist two or four or playlist three or four but there's also this sense of flexibility that we may not be ready to go to playlist three so mm -hmm. we're going to revisit playlist two mm -hmm. um that was you know i i appreciated hearing that from him I don't know how much the residents are feeling that with the summer and, you know, and, and just yeah. meeting everything. I want to, sorry, before we lose you, I want to just, there, there was something about a, a lesson plan that's in the T that's in the, the TPA, right? Yeah. Okay. The uh, TPA. Yeah. Yeah. Do are are when they meet with their host? Are they expected to this summer uh, after the sixteenth? Are they expected to have a lesson plan there too, or not? No. Okay. I don't. I don't think so. I think okay. that the planning, you know, typically. And again, I don't know what the first semester for residents looks like because I didn't work with any residents. There are other faculty members that have. Okay. Worked with those residents. Um, well, I think but I, I would say no, because in the student teaching semester, they're not writing lesson plans in their first week. No. OK, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah OK, yeah. I got it. Um, cool. And, and the other sort of. You know, you, this sort of approach we take with the Pat Carini descriptive review. I, I, I just want you to give thumbs up. I hear that they are doing that kind of writing about a youth more than once, right? Yes. Yeah. So our version of it is okay. It adds to the mix. It doesn't confuse. No, I don't think it confuses at all. I think that, okay. you know, I, I think that's a real good example of how, oh, I remember Karini. We read, you know, we read about Karini and discussed Karini in this graduate course Okay. at the very beginning, you know, right now, for example, there's a resident that we recognized each other. And I said, when did we have a class together? And she said, it was my first semester. So this was the fall of 2019 before the pandemic. Yeah. And in that class, we read Karini uh -huh. and that um, child development assignment had to be completed. Okay. So now she's one of your residents. So, so she'll, okay. Good. Making that connection, you know, can be done. Okay, so I only want to say let's not make this the last time we do this in the next few weeks so that we can continue to make the connections for them um, sure. so it's meaningful. Anything else you want to ask us or remind us of? Or, no, you know? no. Thank, thank you for, you know, I, cool. I, I, I mean, I've enjoyed going into the other weekly meetings where seeing what other teachers are doing across the, the country, but getting into the meat of what's happening and this, just even talking about it, it helps me to make more sense of it because there's a lot, a lot of components yeah. going on. So. Cool. 
All right, so I'm not going to send this out to everyone. I'm just going to send it to um, <laughs> to Nikki and <laughs> any anyway, and to Old Alderson, um, and and okay. they, and they can figure out how yeah. meaningful it is for other people. Yeah, yeah. But cool. Thank yeah. you for advancing the dialogue. And Marina, I'm going to be working tomorrow, but we'll touch base at some point. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Good Thanks, Melissa. You. Good to see. You. Okay. Bye -bye. The, there's an egg. There's an exit. There's an a door out down at the bottom, but you can. It's at on the menu at the bottom. Just. See the white menu at the bottom? The white menu, I don't. It's not in the screen. It's down, to, further down. I have, uh... Maybe you have to pull it up a little bit. <laughs> you can just close can the... Just close close out too, Yes, right? you can do that. That yeah. works. Okay. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Yeah.